Today I'm meeting Sharmila Nicolet, India's number 1 female golfer. Glam Girl Sharmila is a brand in the making and she has much to offer to women's golf in India. Here's an insight into her fabulous life, things that she loves, her tough schedule and moments that make her. Initially when I was a kid I was a state level swimmer and an athlete and um I did basketball um tennis and horse riding for fun so um I started doing these EJJ camps and my cousins and me started going for these camps and um we enjoyed it and I won my first tournament at the age of 14 by 15 shots and since then I've never looked back okay so that's how I started golf and you're already playing in the international circuits aren't you yeah I'm playing playing on the European tour right now I'm, I qualified um 2 months back the youngest indian to qualify in second ever after semi so mm-hmm. i'm really proud to be the only one right now fabulous what does it feel like i mean what what is it to be a, a young woman golfer today uh, in india you know as an indian yeah well um, it's it's nice to be iconic i mean i portray a very fashionable image i think it's nice to mix, mix uh, fashion and golf but women's golf in india is not l- really um, lucrative as of yet i think what we lack are sponsorships and um, funding i think what we really need is an international win you know to um, change the perspective of the people and the corporate sector towards the women's golf you know to attract mm-hmm. to attract the sponsors where i lack right now is sponsorship and um, my season this year solely depends on the sponsors i get so um You know I I wish to be that golfer to um, change give the sport a facelift and um, to achieve that one um, defining moment of women's golf. What does it cost today to stay in the game? Well right now I've done my budgets and to play on on the European tour for a year costs about approximately 40 lakhs including boarding lodging and um travel so it's really it's really expensive affair and lucky for me I have my mom supporting me without any sponsors right now and um, I'm really lucky to have her and without her I couldn't have made it so far So what's a typical day like you know how how many hours do you train in a day Well my schedule is really tight. I have to sacrifice a normal teenage life when I was, you know, below 18 and right now it's kind of tough. Well I practice 6 hours a day on a minimum and I work out 2 hours and I've uh, just started doing yoga and meditation. Mm-hmm. I get once a week off. I give myself completely off, go to the spa, relax, meet friends, party a little bit. And um it's it's really tough life for me. I'm hardly in town. I travel quite a bit. Um it's very nomadic. I literally literally live out of my suitcase and um when I'm in town that's one week in a month and this is my schedule 6 6 hours a day. Okay, so you've told me about your day off and how you spend it at the spa. What about hobbies and interests and little things you love outside of all of that? Well, I'm a big foodie. I love Italian food, Chinese, sushi, name it because I travel all over the world and um I mean I eat, I eat everything all the junk everything I can and work out I don't believe in having a sports person's diet but well, and well my hobbies um I love fashion photography and car modification that's kind of tomboyish Okay so what I've got behind this baby of mine are 19 inch chrome alloys imported from Bangkok the one and only first body kit of Mugen type RR imported from Taiwan and my uh, bling that I have on the sides angel eyes up ahead dark black tints and a carbon fiber spoiler to to fit the exteriors right now i have a twin turbo custom modified exhaust for the engine i've put a filter and a, a muffler so the engine's a bit pimped up inside the car i have um, carbon fiber interiors as you can see and um, ed hardy interiors which um, which are my mats steering wheel and something on the sides and a little pink here and there with a little bling and also my pedals a little funky pedals with with a Swarovski you know and um an extra bling for my phone you know and here here goes the reverse camera basically bling it's all bling that this car it's all de- i mean Swarovski started everywhere last but not the least this is my self defense huh baseball bat so don't mess with me uh-huh. and um i like taking care of my fish and my turtles yeah i have my own tribe of dogs following me as well now seven dogs on in okay. cage view and this is tiara by the yeah way. this is my dog tiara, tiara. <laughs> is she like the queen of the entourage oh yeah she's the hell she just she's a top notch alpha female okay you know when i see you i see this young beautiful successful woman who's who's popular and who's working to you know build a brand for herself um obviously guys would go gaga over you Right. So what's it like to get all the attention that you get? Well, who doesn't like attention especially from boys at my age? But um I think I'm off relationships and boys for now. I think my priority is totally golf. But yes, I like I like the attention, the the fame and the 
I mean, when I go out, you know, all these youngsters coming up to me and saying, you know, I'm a big fan, I really love you. And, you know, I'm, it, that iconic image I portray, I think it's, it inspires me more to become um, a better person and a bigger golfer and to, I mean, make the country prouder. So. Obviously, golf has a very strong influence on life outside of golf. So tell me about how golf has influenced your life. Well, it's amazing because I started traveling and representing India at the age of 13 and uh, to travel around the world, being a globetrotter, meeting different people of different cultures, learning little languages here and there. It's an, it's an experience for me, you know, to have my own responsibilities and uh, traveling on my own. 60% of mental game and uh, that's helped me a lot. It built, amplified my confidence and mm -hmm. uh, made me a better person. And I'll, I love nature. I love traveling. Uh -huh. And um, it's beautiful. I love it. Shamila, tell me about the moments, you know, in, in the years that you've been playing, where you felt the proudest mm -hmm. and you felt the most vulnerable. The proudest moment probably was when I played the Asian Games, Doha, and um, when I was 16 years old. And uh, my most memorable win was um, at the age of 14, like I said, I won by 15 shots. That was the most memorable. What about your most vulnerable moments, though? My most vulnerable, uh, maybe, Maybe the EVR Masters because it was one of the biggest tournaments I've played and I missed the cut by a couple of shots and I, I met all the top top world-class players from Paula Krima to um, Yanni Seng. I think um, that, was, that was quite a nerve-wracking and pressure experience for me. So what's your big dream? You know, what's, what's next for you? Well, big dream would be to be world number one and win on the LPGA. But um, this year, I think um, I want to emulate someone like um, Caroline Hedwal and Yanni Singh, you know, who were rookies when they won their first four tournaments. So I just want to, you know, go out, go out there with a big bang and win a tournament and um, make history, make Indian history with the women's golf. Fabulous. Wish you all the best with Thank that. Thank you.